Hello, everybody, and welcome to Thursday Thursday. And um, I'm Hebro77. And I just wanted to point out a few things. Um, tonight's not going to be the usual Bible reading, although I am going to try to get to that because I'm sure that this this uh, speech which I'm about to give is not going to last for an entire hour. Um, let me take a sip of my coffee here. Oh man. Oh, that's good. That's good. I want to talk to you guys I want to address you guys uh, for one minute here um, I'm not going to be my usual happy-go-lucky funny self well maybe when we do the uh, the Bible reading but I wanted to talk about something a little bit serious something that recently has entered my heart and it almost wounds my heart to say stuff like this it does to see things that are going on in the world today first of all before we get to that there's war fair going on in this world today and it's not the kind of war that happens between Iran and the United States of America, although I do believe that is in, in, in the, in, intimate that that is going to happen. Um, you know, there, there's uh, Donald, uh, President Donald Trump has addressed the nation on this and has talked about it. And I do believe it is only a matter of time. As I'm recording this at 9.13 a.m. on Thursday. Um, I got a, an email. With an alert status. Talking about. President Trump addressing the nation. That is an important issue. And it's definitely something that we should we should keep an eye on and we should be alerted about. Um, and I definitely would like to pray for everyone involved and, and uh, we pray that this war does not happen. I don't like wars. I don't want to see any war happen. But, with that being said, that's not the kind of war I'm talking about. I'm talking about the big one. And it's going to happen. It's going to happen sooner than later. And I'm talking about a war that's not just going to happen, but it's been happening. For thousands of years, if not longer. Let's take a sip of my coffee. I'm talking about spiritual warfare. And I know you've heard this um, before about spiritual warfare. But it is happening. And we have to prepare ourselves. Just as the war between Iran and America. It's not just between Iran and, and, and the United States of America. There will be other people involved too. I'm sure that other Middle Eastern countries will band together, get involved as well, against the United States of America. As I'm sure other countries will band together and be with the 
United States of America to fight this war. You know, um, we've got probably Great Britain, of course. That would be one of them. We've got Russia as an ally, believe it or not. And I think that that's what Donald Trump was doing. He was becoming very friendly with Russia. And that's part of the reason why he's being impeached. There'll be other countries involved in what as well, I'm sure. Going against Iran. And of course, Russia does have a long history um, with their fight against Iran, Iraq, uh, Kuwait, the Middle East in general. Um, but again, that's not the kind of war I'm talking about, brother. Brothers and sisters. I'm talking about the unstoppable uh, war that is spiritual warfare. The un... I don't know if it's unstoppable, but the ongoing war that is spiritual warfare. The enemy is always trying to gather its army. The devil always trying to gather his army. Say, whether that be Satan or Lucifer. Um, I'm a little bit confused on that issue myself, but they're always trying to get our troops. They're always trying to get our head in our heads and our souls and our hearts. Many men and women are blackened. Their hearts are blackened by this. They are they're promised many things. Everlasting life. Which Jesus promises that straight away. And you don't have to do anything for it. And it's not everlasting life in your flesh. It's everlasting life after the flesh. That we can defeat death. As Jesus has done, Jesus defeated death. And he gave us that promise. If we followed him and believed in him and did what he wanted us to do, we would then have everlasting life. So we don't have to do all these evil, sick, twisted, undermined, corrupted things to, to get what, what the devil promises us, what the enemy promises us, which is everlasting life in the flesh. First of all, we're all going to die. It's just a natural act of, of life. It's the natural circle, the natural order of things. All of us who are born and live through birth, live, excuse me, live through birth, live through our teenage years and then into adulthood. If we survive all of that, even if we survive all of that and make it to middle age and then make it to um, to be elderly we're still going to die it's not a matter of when or I'm sorry it's not a matter of if but a matter of when However, 
it is only through Jesus that we have everlasting life. Our flesh may rot, our bodies may die, every one of our, our cells are going to die, and we are going to die. <laughs> there, there is no if, ends, or buts, we're going to die. So just keep that in mind. Next time the enemy tells you, you, you do this, or you do that, you're going to live forever. No. No way, man. That is complete, excuse my language, but it is complete bullshit. You're not going to live forever if you sell your soul. Forget that nonsense. Now, you may have eternal youth. You may look young for as long as you shall live. But that's it. And not only are you going to die, but now that you've made that covenant with Satan, you can never go back. Never. Unless, unless, you got to do one thing. Well, you got to do several things. But I mean, just the one important thing you must do is repent and get with the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, and only through them can you turn things around and get back to the light. go back to the light you see oftentimes we are misdirected we are mismanaged we are misled to promises of rich and power and wealth and health the price of our souls and that's what they want they want us they want our souls they want as many souls as they can get for their army so they could build their army and destroy God destroy the Father the Son the Holy Spirit destroy them let me tell you something that is a funny, <laughs> I mean funny thing, because let me tell you something. I don't care if they have, number one, your soul is not for sale. Your soul belongs to the Father God Almighty and not to Satan. You understand? Not to you. You don't have control over your soul. Yes, God gave us all free will. But our souls don't belong to us. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can't sell what's not ours. So that's the first thing you have to remember. The second thing is I don't care if there's millions of souls on the side of the enemy. It does not matter because no matter what happens, the good, the light, the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit is going to win this war. Let it be said. In the Bible it says that 
God will rule over Satan. Or God, yeah, it's exactly how it's worded. And in the end, at the end of the spiritual warfare, good will rule over evil. Every time. Every time. Do you understand that? The Father is the creator of the heaven and earth. And he created Satan. He created Lucifer. He created every living thing, dead or alive, creature, animal, human pl or plant that's ever lived, that's ever died, that ever will live, or that's never lived here on earth ever. that's never lived here on earth ever that includes the angels and that includes the demons the enemy satan lucifer everybody he's created it all and he can destroy it all you don't think that the creator of the universe can destroy a an army of, of millions of, of souls who have now become part of Satan's army? Ha! You fool! You should not think so narrow-mindedly. We're going to win that war. The question is, what side are you going to be on? That's good coffee. But no, seriously. What side are you on? Are you on the side of Satan? Are you on the side of Lucifer? One of those guys is pretending to be God. The Father. The creator of heaven and earth. The creator of the universe and the creator of all of you. Do you understand? One of them is pretending to be this guy. Or not guy, but you know what I mean. You have to cipher who it is. Who are you worshipping? Who are you looking up to who is your master your lord and savior who is that hmm? because let me tell you something he's not the man with a robe the beard someone said the other day blonde blonde hair and blue eyes uh, I've never seen a Jesus painting with blonde hair um uh, but I have seen the blue eyes. I have blue eyes. <laughs> Am I Jesus? No. But when I was younger, I used to think we're all created in the Father's image. I was thinking wrong. I was wrongfully thinking. But at that time, I didn't know this. I didn't know that this was the wrongful thinking. That this was not the true meaning of what it means when he says you are all created in my image. So at that time, <laughs> I've seen images of Jesus. And that was the model image that I had seen. He had the dark hair, the blue eyes, the golden crown around him. Well, you can see him right there on, on these pictures. Some of the pictures that are flashing in front of your screen, I'm sure. And I looked in the mirror and I said, man, I have blue eyes. 
All right, so I'm 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 good to go. I'm good to go. I'm golden. I don't have to worry about nothing, because I was created in the Father's image, and I look in the mirror and I said, "Man, I look like Jesus today." So that must be good. That must be a good thing. <laughs> Boy, was I. Oh, I was a damn fool. Well, I knew I wasn't Jesus. I wasn't that delusional. But in a way, we think of ourselves as sons and daughters of, of Jesus. Because a lot of us used to think that Jesus and the Father was one and the same. That Jesus had ascended into heaven became one with the Father and is ruler over heaven and earth forever and ever. Right? That's what some of us used to think. Talk about delusional thinking. First of all, nowhere in the Bible is that ever said. It is said that Jesus ascended into heaven is seated at the right hand of the Father. Now, is he a part of the Father? Absolutely. Absolutely. He's a part that makes up the Trinity. You have to understand that. You got the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit. That's the Trinity. Some people would argue that there's four. That the Holy is separated from the Spirit. But you're wrong. <laughs> I'm not going to say you're wrong. I'm not saying you know people are wrong. I could be wrong. But I, I'm to think that Holy Spirit's one word. And that's a separate entity. And that makes up a trinity and not a quattro. Alright. So. Alright. So. I had to go get a cup of coffee. And I started my coffee. And I should have came back as soon as I put the coffee on. But I really felt like I needed that drink of coffee. But when I came back I lost my train of thought. I know I was talking about spiritual warfare and I was going somewhere with it. But it disappeared. But let me tell you. This war is going to be fought. And I don't know when it's going to be fought. This is 2020. Everyone talks about a prophecy for 2020. Everyone says... Uh, 2020, this is, yeah, it's going to be the end of the world. And Jesus is going to come. And he's going to destroy the enemy and blah, blah, blah. No. No. You read the words, but you did not understand. First of all, don't believe in false prophets. The Bible is very clear on this. Something else I wanted to talk about, though. And then, after that, we might I might be able to get to some Bible reading, I hope. That's what this channel is all about. It's the thirst of knowledge. Thirsty Thursday. We thirst for knowledge. We thirst for spiritual knowledge. Fulfillment. We want to be filled by the Holy Spirit. And I got to tell you guys something. It must be the Holy Spirit that's moving me to do this. Because I got to be honest, usually it would be a lot easier to open that book right now and just read just a, a, a meaningless Bible passage. Now, I'm not saying it's meaningless because it. It doesn't mean anything. Every Bible passage has meaning. But what I'm saying is, 
just a Bible passage that I read at random and everyone's happy. Yeah, look what Hebrew's doing. He's reading the Bible passage. That's awesome. But you know what? My heart wouldn't be in it and there would be no meaning behind it. It would be meaningless to me. You know what I'm saying? If, I, if I'm going to to preach something, I want it to be something that means something to you and that something that is being said to me through the Holy Spirit. And I think that's what's happening tonight. Well, to me, it's morning. But uh, as I'm reading this, as this is premiering, it's premiering tonight. So anyway, we did Shifty Sunday here recently. And uh, the main theme, there was a message that we were trying to get across. And I think we got it across quite well. I, I think it, to me, my job was done the minute I spoke up on it. I got it out there. But I felt like it was a very important one. And as we were doing it, this is for the children, by the way. This is for the abused children, the children that are subjected to satanic rituals, to hideous, disgusting uh, satanic rituals, which I, I won't get into fully because that's not for this audience. I know it's not. I know that people are going to turn away and discuss. And I think that that's what happened on Shifty Sunday. I think that's why people were turning away. They were walking away. They were avoiding us. They were deflecting by trying to change the subject. Talk about Emmys. You know. But the message got out there. And I know it did. And I know we've had an excellent rewatch of the show. So I did my job. I got the message out there. And Armour did his job, and he did it well. He got the message out. Not his job, but I mean, I felt like he got out there what he was trying to get out there. And he gets it out there all the time on his platform. Uh, but seems like not too many people are listening. And I understand that and I understand people turning away when they hear this stuff because it is very hard to hear believe me when I sat there and I listened and I still need to go and watch the second part and I'm sorry that I I haven't done that yet but even the first part is so hard to hear so hard to sit there and listen to this testimony that this little girl is given it's so heartbreaking and so it'll make you physically ill let me just say that and then move on it'll make you physically ill and what I don't understand is how people could turn their heads on something this important something this this something you ever heard that song? You know, Jesus loves the little children, little children of the world. Jesus loves all the little children, all the boys and girls. That song, I probably... I don't know. I probably botched it up. I guess. I don't know. But that's what I'm talking about. Jesus loves all the little children in the world. And you should too. What What the hell's wrong with you? If you don't. Well, my point is. I understand. Turning your head. And deflecting. 
because I deflect a lot too when it comes to serious subject matter or when it comes to a deaf in the family or you know a deaf of a friend or something we all joke we all turn it to jokes and we all uh, try to turn to, to humor to mask our true feelings because we can't handle it as human beings we can't handle it we can't handle the darkness the, the, the dark cloud that comes over and, 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 and soils us with this these 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 negative feelings negative force and when you get when you're you're fed negativity you become a negative person trust me it's easy to do trust me it's very easy to do to get negative thoughts in your head you know, especially when it comes down to what you would like to do to some of these people. You get those thoughts. You, 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 Your natural reaction is, I want to go down. I want to hang this guy upside down by his ankles. And I want to kill him or her in a most horrific fashion. That's the thoughts that come to some people's heads. It should come to all of our heads. Well, it shouldn't. No, let me rephrase that. Um, we should all be passionate about this. And yet we're not. We're turned away from it. And this got me to thinking. And it got me to thinking about those commercials that come on late at night. Or maybe they come on late in the afternoon. I don't know. They come on at bizarre times. They seem to come on when people are either at work or in bed. Taking a sip of my coffee there. At work or when they're in bed at these odd times. But the commercials I'm referring to is the starving children of Africa. You know what I'm talking about. They come on. And the children are all skinny and their skin and bones and they look so sickly. And they talk about the children, the suffering that they're going through, the lack of water, clean water, um, the lack of food, nutrition, um, medication that these children need. The antibiotics, the this and that, whatever the case may be. And what do people do? The people that are actually watching TV at this time. For people that, that still watch TV. And I know a lot of us say, oh, we don't, we don't even wa I don't even watch TV anymore. And blah, blah, blah. But there was a time. Well, I know you, you all were watching TV at one time or another. And you know the commercials I speak of. And what do we do when these commercials come on, huh? We turn away or we turn the channel until the commercial is over. We don't want to see it. We can't see it. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. And I would like to think that mostly it's because we are sickened by this. Because we are overcome with feelings of hopelessness. Or we're overcome with, with feelings of sadness. And I don't want to say remorse, but sort of a negativity dark negativity that's what i spoke of before that we don't want to watch this maybe we've watched it so many times and maybe we feel that sense of hopelessness because we can't afford the 85 cents a day or 95 cents a day or even a dollar a day to help these poor starving um dying children that we see on TV and we feel so bad 
that we turn away. Well, guess what? That's what the enemy wants us to do. The enemy wants us to turn our backs on these children. So, there's two things about that. Number one, they do put it on TV at weird times. They put it on TV at weird times because they know that any of this stuff, the disturbing images, the people who are watching it don't, you know, they know that this stuff, for whatever reason, isn't going to get watched it's going to get ignored the channel is going to get changed or whatever but they like to put it on tv because they like to feel like they're doing something or maybe maybe they put it on tv because they feel like they are doing something they're trying their best the best isn't good enough because nobody's watching and this is done on purpose. This is done because they know that saving starving children doesn't get ratings. That people are going to turn away from it. They know this stuff. And so this is all part of the enemy's plan will make it so that they put this stuff on TV at weird times and will get into people's heads. The enemy gets in your head and says, don't watch this, come on. Uh, what can you possibly do about it? You're broke. You can barely struggle to pay your bills. You've given your money to the Salvation Army, you've given your money to charity. Don't worry about it. Turn your back on them. Well, it's working. It's definitely working because we are turning our backs on that. And now we're turning our backs on not just starving children in Africa, children living in the bad conditions, but children right here in the United States of America. And for those of you who are watching this broadcast and saying, I don't live in the United States of America. I live in Australia, or I live in Canada, or I live in Russia. You know, whatever the case may be. But I'm from the United States of America. And I know that a lot of people who are watching this probably are most likely a good majority of them from the United States of America. But that doesn't matter. This abuse of not just sexual abuse, not just physical abuse, not just mental abuse. And I've suffered through mental abuse. And I know how heavy that can, that can weigh on a person. But I've never suffered or even heard about the suffering of, of, of children to this level. And I'm sure a lot of you haven't either. To the level of mental, physical, sexual, and... Just, well, I don't know. But I am asking you now. Stop turning your heads. Ask for strength. Because you are weak. We are all weak. And we all have to ask for strength. I'm not saying weak is in, oh, well, you're just a weak person. You know, I, I know there are people out there that are very strong, willed, mind, sound, body, and heart. But there's still a lot of people turning their heads away from this stuff. 
So obviously there's still some weak people out there. Weak hearted uh, at least. Weak at heart. Who need to see this stuff. Who need to hear the messages. And who need to stay strong while you're doing it. Stop turning your heads. Stop deflecting. Stop walking away from it. Look at it square in the eye. Because this isn't just some some country in Africa. This isn't just happening in London, England. This is not happening in Switzerland. This is not just happening in south of Mexico. Or in Mexico. Or in uh, Argentina or uh, South America. This is happening in your own backyard. This stuff is happening in our own schools. The school, the very schools that we trust, the authorities that we teach our kids to trust, adults, teachers, policemen, uh, the principals, the uh, church leaders, you know, your pastor, your rabbi, whatever the case may be, we are teaching our children to trust these men and women. And they shouldn't. I hate to say it, but they shouldn't. Hold on, people. I need to pause this for a second. Okay. I've gathered my thoughts. It's sad because we teach them to trust these people and even their own family members. Look around you. If you have children or if you know somebody that has Look around you. Look for the warning signs. Look for anything you can possibly look for. And then take your partner, your authority figures, and look them under a microscope. Because this could be happening in your own household. And I know it's a touchy subject, and I know there are several people out there who are tuning in right now who have probably just left the room, because I know that some of them may have suffered their own form of abuse or another. And let's pray for those people. Let's pray for the ones who, have, who are turning their heads. Let's pray for the ones who have suffered through this type of abuse who know what we're talking about know what we're dealing with and let's pray that they will be given the strength and courage to stand up against these people to be able to tell their own testimony to be able to tell their own story because we have got to help these children you know I hear it every week from Armour's channel Rather, he's doing um, Wednesday Word or a Bible reading or whatever the case may be. At the end of every single thing that he always does, he says, pray for the children. We need to do that. We need to pray for the children. Because, ladies and gentlemen, this stuff's going on. And rather you want to turn a blind eye to it or not, it's still going on. And not talking about it is not solving anything. And not listening to the words that I'm saying is not solving anything either. You could turn your head from it, you can ignore it, you could deflect, whatever, but it's still going to happen. And when you turn your head and you deflect and you talk about other stuff that you think is important. 
This stuff gets worse and worse. And then, whether you're doing it on purpose or not, you are becoming part of the problem. And I know it's hard. And I know it's hard to deal with. It's hard to watch those images on TV of those starving children as well. But you got to reach down inside and, and step up to the evil. And this all goes back to spiritual warfare. We have to be strong. And if we're not strong, we need to ask the Father for his strength to strengthen us. We need to put on that armor of God to defeat the enemy. Because rather it be uh, the children suffering through, through hideous abuse or rather it be someone going on, on a murder spree and, and killing people and blah blah blah. Whatever the case may be, right? We need to, pl to, to, to pray for strength. And I want each and every one of you to not listen to me. That's right. Don't listen to me. Don't take my, my word for it. Remember that show, Reading Rainbow? Where, um, uh, what's his name? Jordy LaForge um, would say at the end of each segment, don't take my word for it. And then he'd have somebody come up and they would say uh, what books they have read. And they have given him, they have given us their recommendations because they experienced it. They read that book and they know what the book is about. And they're asking you, they're asking you to pick up that book and read it. Well, I'm asking you to not take my word for it. I'm asking you to get online, do some research, go to Armor Up's Warriors Call channel, watch his videos. Very important. And I would venture to say you don't even have to watch the whole thing. If you can't handle the whole thing, you don't have to watch it. As long as you watch enough to where you get the point of what's happening and it makes you feel in your heart. If it touches your heart and it tells you something, then that should tell you you need to get up and do something. And that's why today I'm speaking to you that's why to Shifty Sunday, I wanted to get out that message because I saw one, just one of his videos and it touched my heart and it made me want to go to whatever country that was and, uh, do something to some of these guys like viciously I mean I can't even I don't even want to talk about it on air what was going through my head but definitely it made me want to do that Shifty Sunday show and it made me want to talk about this today because let me tell you something it moved me it moved my heart It um, motivated me to want to do this. Because I don't know about you guys, but I have children of my own. And I would like to think that they are living in a safe environment. Well, I know they're living in a safe environment. But I would like to think that every, every morning when those children go to school, that they go there and they're sitting in their desk and their teachers are teaching them and that they are interacting with them in a good, healthy, nourishing way. And they are learning stuff. They are there to learn. And they aren't being mistreated. And they aren't being touched in any way. 
are they they're not that they're safe excuse me <clears throat> and they're not they're they're not being led down some hallway and and being made to do things that no kid adult nobody should be led or made to do and especially children because they're so impressionable they have impressionable young minds and this is the kind of thing that will destroy a child, turn him into an evil monster. Hopefully it's not the case that it doesn't do that. Hopefully they go down the other path and they become strong people and they become positive people and they become, you know, good people. They can get over this. Well, they're never going to get over it. But I mean... They, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but anyway, this is something that's important. You should listen. I never sit here and, and I don't want to preach to people. That's the last thing I want to do. I'm not one of those guys. All right. I'm not sitting here saying, oh, you better do this or you're going to go to hell or you know, whatever. All I'm asking, all I'm asking, go check it out. Do some research. Use your own discernment and come to your own conclusions. And if it touches you in your heart, then God bless you. Go out into the world and, and do what the Holy Spirit moves you to do. If not, then the very least you can do is just push along the word. Say, hey, I don't really believe in this or whatever. This didn't really move me. But I want to pass along the word because I do want to help uh, in any way I can. And I can't imagine anybody that doesn't want to help. You know, it's like those people, even the people that turn their heads from the starving children of Africa still help in some way, form, or another. Or, or at least try to I don't know. But um, anyway, it looks like we're not going to get to a Bible reading this week. Um, hopefully next week I, I will do that. But I got to go where the Holy Spirit asked me to go. Whatever the Holy Spirit moves me. And actually, I need to catch up on my praying because I haven't been praying a whole lot here. Like I've been praying for my meals and stuff like that. And I did say a prayer for... Uh, raven nighthawk the other day um and you know hopefully she's getting better she's doing well i did promise that i would pray for her and i did pray for her um i pray i prayed for people that that's asked for their prayers but i need to really to sit back and and um get with the father sometime this week and, and um, you know do some meditation meditational prayers to really do it you know and to go for it um, but anyway with that being said I'm done with my rant I don't consider it a rant though you know I just consider it something that I was told to say and do, and I did that. That message got out. <sighs> and I really do hope that you people are, are touched by this and that you try to try, at least try. That's all I'm asking. I'm Like I said, man, you know, I'm not sitting here on my high horse um, preaching to everyone. Oh, if you don't do this, you're, you're a bad person or blah, 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 you know. That's not me. That's totally not me. Go out there and do your own thing. But certainly, this is very important to me, and I want to get the message out there, and I want to. I want people to know, most of all, that this is happening. This isn't something that we just pulled out of the sky one day and said, "Oh, here's uh, these people, these children are being uh, um, abused." 
uh, by sat sat satanic ritual abuse and blah, blah, blah. No, that's a thing that's really happening. And it's really out there and you really should look into it. Um, you know, do some research. At the very least, you could start with Warrior's Call. Go to Armor Up's Warrior's Call channel and check it out. You know, I'll put another description uh, down the link below just like I did in my last... I forget what video it was, but it was the last one I did. Um, before we, <clears throat> It was before we went live with uh, Shifty Sunday. So anyway, you know, um, we're just about just about reached that point of the program where we're out of time um so i'll just go ahead and, and you know i'd like to thank everyone for watching this i'm sorry there wasn't a bible reading this channel is supposed to be for bible readings but i had something to say it was something important to say and i wanted to get it out there and so i've done that but i do appreciate the support i do appreciate everyone watching and we hope that you watch again next week, which, in which I will try to get back to regular form. I will get back to reading the Bible. And, uh, you know, sometimes we get, we get a side quest. You know, you ever played The Legend of Zelda? And um, you have the big quest, right? The big ones. Like, the big quest is the Bible reading. And the side quest, like in the Legend of Zelda game, for example, a side quest would be collecting uh, bottles or like um, collecting heart containers where you have to do certain tasks or you have to do like a, a race or something in a certain amount of time and you get a heart container or you have to like, you know, find certain clues or whatever whatever the case may be that that's a side quest and well sometimes i have to go on these little side quests and i did that so you know i'm really done talking about it but uh also one thing i wanted to bring up is the babies just remember that when a mother and father become drug addicts or they become poor or maybe both of them die in a horrible car accident or they uh, get murdered or something. Maybe they both die of cancer at the same time. It's not likely, but it is possible. But just remember, when, they, when the babies go to the system or when the children go to the system, it's not always... The system isn't always uh, straight and narrow. You know that. You people from the true for communities of all people know that. You know the government's corrupt. And the government only does what the government wants to do. And that's own interest. It's not in the interest, any interest of any of the people. So, you know, just saying, use your discernment and look out for these people and Keep them under a microscope because they're not on the level either. These social services are not always looking out for the best interest of the children. And I'd hate to say it like this, but a lot of times, often, it's almost like a, a, a pound. You know, like you have a pound for your cats and dogs or whatever. There's a pound for children, too unfortunately sad sad stuff so um just use your discernment keep them under a microscope uh until next time this is hebrew 77 saying hey you know what i love you all i do i really do and father's blessings to all of you and i hope you have the best of nights and we'll see you again next week and hopefully next week we'll do some bible reading all right, then. Uh, until next time, this is Hebro 77 saying so long, everybody. God bless.